what is going on guys we are back playing some more surviving with ender io uh, today we are going to be discussing the powered spawner which pretty much does exactly what its name says it does you're going to give it power and then it's going to spawn a specific mob that you're going to designate when you're actually crafting it now the reason you might want to use the powered spawner over let's say the relocator obelisk which is functioning perfectly right here is for less conventional mobs, things that don't spawn as frequently as zombies and skeletons and creepers and endermen. You're not really walking around outside seeing them at night. Uh, things like witches, for example. Now, the reason I'm using that as an example is that is what we are going to look into spawning today. And the reason behind it is they've got some decent drops and you might want their glowstone dust. You might want, uh, I guess, the redstone from them. That's pretty much all that we're going for. But say you want something that's a little bit less commonly spawned like witches, then you are going to have to invest a little bit more power into the powered spawner than you would with the relocator obelisk, but you're going to be able to force the spawning of them at a certain rate depending on whether you have capacitor upgrades in it or not, and what's around you. So, it's actually relatively easy to craft. To start things out, you need to go and you need to find a vanilla mob spawner. It doesn't matter what type it is, find any of them, and when you break it, you might already know this, but you're going to get a broken spawner, something you wouldn't normally get unless you have Ender I.O. Yes, you'll get, you know, break it, get XP, but you'll also get a broken spawner that will be specified to whatever mob it is when you break it. So I went, I found a zombie spawner, nothing special. I broke it, I got a broken spawner that specified to zombie, and you can see if I hold shift down, it says combine with a powered spawner in an anvil to set spawn type. So essentially what you're going to do is craft a powered spawner, which is really easy to craft, and then that is going to be completely unspecified as to what it's going to spawn. Then you're going to take a broken spawner, specify that to what you want to be spawned, and then you're going to combine the powered spawner with the broken spawner that's designated to what you want, and that is going to give you the powered spawner that is going to spawn exactly what you want. Now the only downside of this is that with the relocator obelisk and a lot of different things that are in Ender IO, like the um, attraction obelisk, you can actually put soul vials in and out and just exchange them whenever you want if you want to specify different things for different needs and move it around and you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. Unfortunately, when you set up the powered spawner, whatever you set the broken spawner to and combine it with the powered spawner, that is what it's going to be. You're going to have to do this whole process over again if you want to change what's actually being spawned with it. So that is a huge downside. It's not as versatile, but you're probably going to use this if you have a specific need and you're not going to be switching it back and forth between random different mobs. Uh, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So the first thing that we need to do is come over here to the soul binder. We're going to put the broken spawner in there. And then we're going to take a soul vial, whichever mob you want to spawn. In my case, it's a witch. And we're going to put it in here. Now you should do this relatively early on because you can see it takes eight player levels. The minute I put this in there, it's going to go really, really slow. So what I'll probably do is put in a capacitor. It's going to use up a lot of power here, um, but hopefully it'll go at least a little bit faster. I can't keep up with the power needs right now, uh, but it should at least go slightly faster and hopefully finish a little bit sooner. One thing that I've, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've mentioned that this thing spins around as it's actually doing the process, but the spinning slows down so that every process takes one full turn of it. So I think that's pretty darn cool. But as you can see, it's only at 20% right now, so we can get to the other crafting, and hopefully that loud noise in the background won't bother you all too much. So now we need to craft the powered spawner itself, and this is actually really cheap. You're just going to take any mob head. I'm going to use an enderman head because I actually have a lot of them now, uh, but then it's going to take four electrical steel, two vibrant crystals, a Z-Logic controller, and a machine chassis. So I guess the Z-Logic controller is a little bit annoying to make. You got to go into the slice and splice a little bit, but really the only annoying part of this to craft. So there we go, we've got the powered spawner now, and you can see it says it's empty. And it says combine with a broken spawner in an anvil, and that's what's going to allow you to specify what you actually want. Right now, if you were to try and use this, you would not be able to spawn anything. So now we just kind of got to wait for this to finish over here. So one thing I want to discuss is why we're actually doing this today. And I guess I probably briefly mentioned it before, but it was suggested to me that I use the powered spawner to spawn witches because I mentioned that I needed both glowstone dust and redstone dust in the vat. And you can see right here is using the redstone dust to make the rocket fuel. But we're also going to need glowstone dust if we are going to use the uh, weather controller out here, this whole setup. This is going to require it for actually making it daytime if we want the liquid sunshine, I believe. Uh, if we take a look at the recipes here, liquid sunshine should take it. 
Yeah, so it takes glowstone or glowstone dust either. So if you're trying to use the Ender IO fluids and you don't feel like actually going out and gathering either of those, and you're working with Ender IO and maybe a couple other mods, this may be the only way for you to actually automate this completely. And luckily for me, this is the last step to fully automate it, and then we'll have actually pretty good power generation using rocket fuel and uh, the combustion generator. So hopefully this is almost done over here. 75%. Okay, well, we're, we're making our way there. I don't really have anything else I can ramble about right now. I thought this would have been better power. It's a... Uh, it's, oh, it's the conduits. That's what it is. I've, I haven't upgraded the conduits right now, so this is completely useless because it is maxed out. That didn't occur to me. I should actually upgrade these really, really soon. But, uh, okay, so I guess we could honestly probably take this uh, octatic capacitor out. But I'm going to wait for it to finish. It's almost there. H how have you guys been? How are you guys doing? You know? W what's up with your life? Uh, actually, I guess instead of rambling like that and being awkward, one thing I did set up was the uh, XP vacuum. If you guys don't know what this is, it's essentially a vacuum that you have to jumpstart with a bucket of uh, experience, and then it's going to pull and output liquid XP into any tank that is adjacent to it or any fluid conduit. So as you can see, this tank is full, and we can just kind of come over here, and it's nice because it pulls the XP to us, but it does put them in here, and now we have 16 full buckets of liquid XP. So that's pretty cool, just something I thought I'd note. Now we've got a broken spawner for a witch and in an our empty soul vial. So the next thing we need to do is come over to our anvil. Doesn't matter if you're using a dark steel anvil, which I am, or if you're using a regular one, but you put the powered spawner in there, you put the broken spawner in there, and then it takes 16 levels. And as you can see, the powered spawner is now specified to witch. So there we go. Wasted a bunch of XP, but now we've got our powered spawner. And this is actually good to go. That's all you need to do, except put power into it. And that is why I've got my dimensional transceiver. Now, I am going to grab out the octatic capacitor just to show you all the different power. Uh, I guess the amount of power it will consume at each capacitor stage. But we're only going to be using at most the double layer capacitor today just because it actually takes a significant chunk of power to get working. So we're going to come up here and I'm actually going to be using the same, uh, I guess it was a 9x9 nine nine area. And we're pretty much just going to drop them, and then if the killer Joe needs to kill them, it can. But I'm going to do this just because there's really no better way to clear out an area for this. So I thought, you know what, instead of setting up a killer Joe in a second area, we'll go into the middle. So one, two, three, four, it should be right here. We can come out and build down. And we'll just break our way in here. I'm probably going to get shot by a skeleton and fall. But yeah, so we'll go in there. Getting a little late right now, but yeah, so we're going to put it right below this. So I just got to keep going down a little bit. Okay, I think we should be good here. We're going to have to set this up, and we're also going to have to set a dimensional transceiver up. So we'll go down here. Now we should be good. So let's get in here, and I got to be really careful. I wonder if I can actually turn this off right now. Oh my gosh. Can we... Never active. Okay, so we want this to stop so that we can actually get in here and work a little bit. Uh, so let's go. Oh, that's not what we want. I'm trying to scroll through my bar to get to my dirt. Okay, so we'll build out here a little bit. Now, the reason that we're hooking a powered spawner up to a dimensional transceiver is A, I don't want to be wiring a ton of stuff down from the ceiling. B, it's also going to take way more than this would be able to supply up there. As you can see, this is only using 720 RF per tick with a full capacitor in it. So it's fully upgraded, 720 RF per tick. Let's throw down the powered spawner right here. And let's just make sure if we check the range, it spawns in a four block radius around it. So we're all good in here and it's not even going to go up to the ceiling. So that's a perfectly fine spot. We can hide the range. Uh, works just like a regular spawner. But right now it's going to use 800 RF per tick without any upgrades. It's already using more than our relocator obelisk. So that is one of the big downsides. Double layer makes it use 4000 RF per tick and an octatic is 8,000. Now, as you can see, the buffer inside does get upgraded a little bit. It goes from 100 to 300,000, and then 300,000 to 500,000, but it's not making any huge jumps. It doesn't even make it to 1 million, so not great. But you can also use this powered spawner to capture things or to spawn them. So you do have the option. I've never actually used the capture option. I'm not sure if it's really commonly used or even useful. But you can just click soul vials in there and it will be able to capture stuff around it. We're not going to be using that feature, I think, ever. But it is an option. So, this will be set on always active. Probably going to leave it right now with no upgrades in it. 
uh, just because it's going to take a ton of power. But we can throw down our dimensional transceiver there. We can hook it up to receive power. And it should be... Okay, guys, so we are back. Now, the internal buffer for this did fill up completely, took a little bit, and now it is ready to spawn. Now, unfortunately, even though it's only using 800 RF per tick, it's not filling up. And the reason behind that, something I just realized, is my whole base is wired with the basic conduits, which are transporting 640. So, pretty much, I am going even slower than it should be, but it is at 34%, probably soon to be 35%. Uh, yeah, so it's going up very slowly, but you can see the witch is spinning around in there like a regular spawner And when it eventually does hit 100% it will spawn like a regular spawner whatever mob you've designated and then it will keep going Something to keep in mind though. It actually does have error messages similar to let's say the farming station uh, Which you guys might have seen the episode for it if you have no seeds in it or you've got no space It'll actually pop up a little message That'll be kind of like a hologram right above it, and it'll say what's wrong with it in certain cases. Well, if there's too many mobs around this, like with a regular spawner, it will stop spawning. And when that happens, it'll say too many mobs or something along those lines to let you know what's going on. So it is pretty nice in that it kind of helps you out a little bit if you're having some trouble. But once I upgrade all the different conduits in the base to even just the second tier of them, not even the final tier... But just the second one, this should max out, and we should be able to put at least the double air capacitor upgrade in there and deal with that. But uh, I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. If you found it entertaining or informative in any way, please feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot. And I will talk to you guys later.